Hello and welcome back to XYZ. This week we are going to use Sverchok to generate a dynamic grid of vertices that is then intersected by an object of our choosing. We then bring this grid over into geometry nodes and scatter cubes onto every vertex, which helps us generate our voxel effect. Afterwards we play around with some dynamic scaling effects that can be animated. If you want to know more about geometry nodes, you will find an introduction tutorial on my channel. I will again be using the latest Blender 2.93 Alpha for this tutorial. Since this is still in active development, expect some instability, crashes and bugs. As always, check the video description for some useful links and resources. So let's turn everything into cubes. So right away, we are heading over into Svetchuk nodes. And this is where we will create our voxel grid setup. For this we will uh, start out with an object in light and we will need an object we will start out with. Let's center this. Also extrude it a little bit. And we can of course edit the text. And if we hit the get button, we'll see that we load it in our text object. And then we head on into the analyzers and we want to get the bounding box. Here we can hook up our vertices of our object. We are interested in the size in X, Y and C. We will uh, do some math with these three uh, directions. We will feed that into the vector P field that you can find in the spatial section. What this node does, let's bring in a mesh viewer in the this section. This will output already an object that is automatically called alpha. And when we hook up our vertices, it will show up in the viewport. And let me get the text out of the way for now. Here we have our vertices that are generated by the vector P field. And we will specify a size in every direction and we can also specify uh, how many points in every di direction will be generated and we will do some math with uh, the bonding box size to get all these values so no matter what object you feed in to this node setup it will always uh, generate a voxel grid for you that we will then use in geometry nodes to generate the actual voxel effect. And right away I'm heading over into the number section and get in a scalar math node. And in here there should be a ceiling operation. Here it is. And I'd like to do a ceiling on all three of our size parameters. So they will be rounded up to the next full number. And this we will already hook up to our size in the vector P field. 
then we will need a number. This one will be an integer. And this uh, should specify the resolution or the density of our of our voxel grid that we generate. We'll set that to 20 for now. And we copy our math node. Let's do a division. And we will divide y by x. But let's do the one where we ran the ceiling operation on. Next, we want to multiply it. And we will multiply it by our integer number. Let's see what that outputs. In the text section, we have a statoscope MK2 node that can output every value. And let's make sure we are always dividing by x so we get the right values. And just to be Save, I run another ceiling on this. They were full numbers for now, but when we input another density, it might not be. And for our resolution of the voxel grid, we want to always have full numbers and not any float values because that can lead to some rounding errors and let's get that all in and we see it gives us an error and the reason is it expects an actual integer and we were just feeding it in a float value and we have a float to integer node that we can use in this case. And when we do that, we are generating a grid of vertices. It will be a little bit bigger since we are rounding up to the next full unit. So however long our text is, it will be rounded up with the ceiling to the next uh, full Blender unit. With that, we can actually make sure our object is most likely always inside of our grid that we are generating. And with that, I'd like to head over into geometry nodes. Next, what we also still need is the scale of our voxels. They should also uh, scale to the correct value depending the size of our grid.
So depending on how dense it gets, the voxel should actually become smaller. And we also need a way to bring over uh, this scale value into geometry nodes. And for that, I'm going to use, let's see where that is. I'd like to generate an empty object that I then just scale to this value and pretty much attach the scale to this and then get the object later on in geometry nodes and read out the scale and reuse it. So over in the this section there is an empty out and we already see that it is generating an empty for us in the scene. And we can, of course, rename it. And let's get the text into the ob object section. And also our grid into the object section. And we can rename our voxel grid as well. And we should actually specify the collection in Svechok. Otherwise, it will always regenerate it outside of the collection and just link it in if we uh, move it manually. And this way, it will always move to the specified collection. And what I would also like to do is link up uh, the matrix of our object to our generated voxel grid. This way, when we move our base object, the voxel grid will follow and generate around it. But back to our MT, we have an actual float value, and what we need is a matrix. So let's create a matrix in node and get the float into the scale. We don't actually need to generate a vector out of this float. It will just use uh, the float value for every axis for the scale. And let's head over to geometry nodes. Right here, we will need a point instance node. And we will need an actual mesh that will become our voxel. And what we need to be careful about is a cube in Blender, when it's new created, it has a scale of one but its actual dimensions are two blender units in every direction. This will screw up our scaling and we need to make sure that dimension is only one blender unit in every axis. So we will scale this cube by half and then apply the scale to have it at one again. Let's rename that, then head back into geometry notes.
and right here we can pick our voxel and we need to scale it for that we bring in a point scale node we also need our helper object in here our empty and there is an input object info node and right here we can grab our helper object set the point scale to a vector and grab our scale that we generated in Svechok. And right away we see that not all of the voxels are lining up since we don't want to have uh, spaces in between. We will head back into Svechok at our voxel grid node tree and what we need to do is add one more vertices in every direction so let's make some space here and we switch that to add And when we do that, we see that our voxel grid is filled up completely. Also, you need to be careful when your voxel grid uh, becomes too low resolution. It can happen that the cubes are intersecting since we are running a ceiling operation and there might be some rounding uh, differences. So there is one more thing we need to do in Sweatshirt, and that is see which one of our generated grid points is actually inside of our text object. Since we don't want to output the whole grid, but just the part that is intersecting with our text. And for that, we have and points inside mesh node in the analyzer section and we hook up our vertex p field into the points input and our text object uh, we need the vertices and our polygons and let's set that to multi-sample And when we output our vertices, we see that they are based on an intersection with our text object. For this to really work, we have to increase the density. We should be able to actually grab our text object, move it around in the scene, and our uh, voxelized version should follow. But we manually have to update Swatchuk. For that to happen but when we manually trigger the update we see that it actually really follows our text object so the next thing is we are heading back over into geometry nodes to actually create the voxel scale effect based on some noise textures so we are heading back over into geometry nodes 
and we want to control our scale of our voxels based on some noise textures. And for that, we bring in an attribute sample texture node. And we create a cloud texture for now. And since uh, this effect is procedural, you can change any values later on. You can completely switch out the noise textures and even load in your own images or even movie files to draft this effect. And for the mapping, I will generate a new attribute. So I'll do some attribute math. We will use the position. Let's make this an vector math node. Since position is a vector. And with that we can uh, offset every axis and I'll generate a new attribute I call that sample position and I use that for the mapping and I output that into an attribute called voxel scale. And I bring in an attribute mix node and set the factor to an attribute. This is where I use my voxel scale. And our two inputs will become vectors. And since I want to be able to manually change the scale later on, I will do some vector math. Multiply our scale that comes over from Svartshock for the minimum is the A. And then a second multiply operation that I set to 1 for our B. And we write that to the voxel scale again. Let's set the point scale to an attribute. And with this setup, I can set the minimum and maximum value of our voxel scale still while also getting in the right scale from Svartshock. And right away we see that our noise texture is now generating the scale for our voxels and we can offset this. But what if we don't just want a single noise texture to make up our effect? We can bring in another attribute sample texture node. And we create another noise and we sample from the same position but let's rename our result into a voxel scale 1 and voxel scale 2 
and we bring in another attribute mix node. And now with uh, this factor, we can blend between our two noise textures and get maybe a more interesting effect and play around with this later. And I would also like to have a way to offset uh, both of these textures or the place where they are sampled from separately so they are not both sampled from the same position. So we have a uh, sample position zero one. And a sample position zero two. And with that, I can set the place where the noise texture is sampled from individually. And I'd also like to have an automatic uh, animation. For that, I bring in a circle and an empty object. And for the empty object, I'll be using a constraint, follow path. I grab the circle, get the timeline in, since we will need some keyframes. And I set the keyframes, and now the empty is following the circle perfectly. I will now use uh, the empty, the position of the empty, to set the place where the noise textures are uh, sampled from. So I bring in another object info. I grab the empty object. get a attribute vector math node for the B input I use a vector get the location of the empty in and I will use the position and write it to the sample position all so I create another new attribute and I would like to have a way where I could say if I want to use this animation or by how much the noise texture should be affected by this animation. So I will need some attribute mix notes for that. And I duplicate that. And I use the position as the A input. And the sample position all in the B input. And write the result into the sample position one. And the sample position too. 
and now I can set by how much every noise texture is affected by the animation. And also offset it manually and blend between our two noise textures and have a lot of control with this setup and there is a lot of cool stuff you can do with this so now we can just uh, wrap everything up in a node group and expose some values so this will become a bit better to work with so the first thing i want to expose is the controller object then uh, the factor and the sample offset and for both of our noise textures then i'd like to have the factor that blends between our two noise textures and also the minimum and maximum scale of our voxels so we can control that and let's rename all of the inputs And let's expose all these values into the modifier stack. So we don't even have to go into the geometry node editor. We can control everything in the node in the modifier stack. And it sometimes happens that Svetchuk is a bit buggy at the moment since we are using the alpha version of Blender. And this seems to help to just drop the object and uh, reapply it. So there is one more thing to do now, and that is create a shader for our effect. I will select the voxel and create a new shader and i will be using uh, the object info node and use the location and also uh, the random output to get some interesting results <laughs> 
And since our effect is completely procedural, we can head over into Sweatshock. And sometimes when you load in the file again, it doesn't recognize that object. So I'll just reselect that. And when reloading Sweatshock, it should be fine. But we can not only go with a text object, we can just bring in a monkey head. Now we'll be reducing the density a bit since it can overwhelm Blender really fast since we are generating so many cubes depending on the size of our object and the density we specify. So we'd rather start low on the density and work up from there if we want more. And we can just run the animation and it will already work. We can switch that out for Taurus. And that works as well. And here we have our effect that turns everything it touches into little cubes. With the effect being highly procedural, you can go crazy with adjusting the different settings in Spurchuk, the modifier stack, and the noise textures. I hope you had fun creating this effect, and if you like to support me, you will find some links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and I'd love to see you all next time. Happy blending!